group planning, for example, uh, this is a element of the judge template that we have within our, our ecosystem and our, within our platform that can be used to evaluate planning using an LLM as a judge. And so a couple of things to call out here is that the data that's being taken in is a task. So it's usually an input from a user. So what is the agent being asked to do? What are the available tools that it has that it can use to do that? So what are the different functions it can call or paths it can go down? And then what is the plan that was generated? So again, this is kind of after the plan has been generated, you're taking this template and sort of applying it to the generated plan. And then you're asking it for this criteria. So you're asking whether the plan is valid in itself. It doesn't include made up tools, whether the, the tools will actually answer the user's question and kind of complete the task that's been assigned to the agent. And then whether the plan uh, will achieve the desired outcome. And then finally, if it's the shortest and most efficient plan to accomplish the task, that's almost getting more towards the trajectory evaluation side. And so that's something that we can also see incorporated into the planning step. Again, this is a powerful kind of eval, but it only works for agents where you are actually having it generate a specific plan before acting from there. So another way to think about this is kind of like an augmented routing eval in a way. And then when it comes to reflection, I think a lot of times the questions that you're asking from a reflection perspective uh, are things that can be sometimes answered in code. And uh, so if you think of the questions that you may ask from a reflection perspective, you might ask if the agent made any sort of error in a previous step depending on what the error is, what the kind of error it could make. That might be a code-based check that you could make, or it might have to be with an LLM as a judge. Oftentimes, you can also look at things like the format of the outputs. So because you're looking midway through the execution of your agent, you can check whether the outputs from a previous step are formatted as expected, or whether uh, the output is maybe out of a expected distribution range. So if you're having it generate something numeric or classification labels or something like that as part of an intermediate step, you can check to see whether the agent has or whether that particular step has generated something that's not one of those classification labels, or it's not a number, it should be a number, or it's a number, it shouldn't be a number. So you can kind of look at some of these different formatting steps throughout to try to find your uh, points where you might want to reflect and repeat a previous step to improve. And then the, the fourth one that we have in here is whether the agent chose to use or not use certain tools. So you may also know that for certain kinds of inputs or certain tasks, it's going to be required to use a tool. And so you can bake some of that logic into this reflection step as well, too, to say, if that tool hasn't been used, then we're going to uh, repeat that previous step to see if it can make a make an earlier decision. So it's kind of returning back to an earlier point in your application to keep it running. And hopefully a theme that you'll see throughout this whole series is that if you can make the check with code instead of an LLM, then try to do it with code because that will be deterministic. It will not have the uh, additional uncertainty that comes with an LLM as a judge check as you go through. And then our final one here, trajectory. Uh, so from a trajectory standpoint, um, oftentimes the way that we see trajectory evaluated in the industry is comparing against ground truth. So you'll see this is an example I pulled from actually a Google eval library where they incorporate this technique. And it's one that we have integrated with uh, along with our library to actually run within Horizon Phoenix. And so what you'll see is on the left, the reference trajectory for a particular example, what are the expected tools and parameters as part of that. And then on the right, you'll see the actual trajectory. And so this is what actually happened when we ran the agent and whether it actually made the right call. And so you can see in this case, there are a couple places where uh, even though it's getting the right uh, inputs, it's not actually, or the right tool names, it's not actually getting the correct inputs. So if you look, for example, this device ID device two here is the expected value. And then device ID device three is the actual one that we're seeing. So you can use these trajectory evals to kind of encompass your routing evals that we looked at last week, as well as the overall trajectory and overall path that's taken. So they're kind of another way of augmenting some of those on top. Um, the downside is that you have to have this actual expected output, this expected trajectory which you may not have depending on the input. So this is oftentimes something that we see used in more of a development context as you're building your agent, because you can specify certain test cases, you could specify expected trajectories and then test against those. But then once you get into the wild, uh, you don't actually know all the different inputs that you're gonna get. And so you can't really use the same comparison against ground truth method for trajectory uh, and for measuring trajectory. So again, this is kind of a augmented version of some of the routing evals that we looked at previously, but it is somewhat limited in uh, in how it can be evaluated and where you have ground truth. Obviously with trajectory, you can use an LLM as a judge. You can essentially take the actual trajectory, so the, the box on the right here, and you can compose that into a prompt along with some of the possible tools. And you could ask an LLM to critique that. I think what we found in practice there is that if you do so, then you'll have, uh, if the LLM or if your agent has taken very obviously four paths, if it's repeated tools with the same inputs, for example, LLM as a judge can usually find that and, um, and sort of track that and call that out. 
But if it's a bit more of an insidious kind of uh, or hard to detect sort of trajectory mistake, then just a base LLM as a judge is going to have a hard time detecting that. So it can be useful, but it sort of limits you to some of the more obvious errors that are going to come through in that case. So if you think back to previous weeks where we looked at routing evals, we looked at skill evals, and we looked at some of the different techniques that are used there, you can now add these trajectory reflection and planning evals to that same kind of locker that you have of different testing techniques. Again, these ones are a little bit more specific to the type of application that you're building. If you don't have a planning step, can't really use the planning eval. If you don't have a reflection step in your agent, you're not going to use the reflection eval. Uh, however, uh, almost every agent can use the trajectory, but you're going to be slightly limited in terms of the uh, the types of ground truth you can compare against uh, and some of the issues that you can detect with an LLM as a judge. Mm -hmm.